We just finished wrapping up a bunch of intake manifold testing on our 440 cubic inch LS7, and we're gonna go over all the results here soon. So for intake manifolds, we started with a Holly High Ram and actually had the lower ported by Brett Barber. The upper, we started with a 4150 dual quad throttle body setup, went to a dual quad 4500 throttle body setup, went to a single 105 throttle body setup, and then we finished off the testing with an MSD Atomic Air Force. The specs for our engine include an eight counterweight crank, 13 to one compression ratio, LS7 style CNC heads. It has an LSC dry sump setup on it, ATI damper, hydraulic roller camshaft from Comp Cams and their valve train. Fueling is through 85 pound per hour Holley injectors on E85 controlled by Holley Dominator. And then to kind of finish it all off, we've got the Holley tall style valve covers, uh, Mr. Gasket electric water pump for LS. And then we've got our high ram setup and MSD coils. We also tested this motor with a set of Hooker 2-inch primary headers. Now we're going to sit down with Steve Brule at West Tech and go over the results. So we got Steve Brule here from West Tech Performance where we actually ran the engine on the dyno here. And Steve, what we have in front of us is our winner, which is obviously not a big surprise. We've got two 2000 CFM 4500 throttle bodies on a 440 cubic inch motor, only revving about 7400. And we made 754 horsepower and 624.9 pound-feet of torque. Those things are huge, particularly on 440 inches. I think what's interesting is even though there's pro the math tells me that this is supposed to use you know somewhere in the area of 1,000 CFM, there's about three times, four times that much on here now. So I think really the results we saw where there was a slight divergence in the curve between the 4150 style throttle bodies and these might be as much related to bore spacing with the 4500s being a little larger, a little better alignment over each port. Because what we saw down lower, as you saw in the graphs when we were looking at them, was it was pretty much an overlay until right at the very, very top. You know, we see that a lot when something's honestly sometimes just plain too big. You'll see a peak number pick up by four or five, but the sacrifice you give away in drivability is not generally worth it. This much throttle body, essentially, when we get into 50% throttle or more, we're pretty much at all the air that motor's ever going to need. Yeah. So drivability becomes a big issue. Well, it's like back in the 80s, one of the tricks was put a big throttle body on, and it feels really snappy, but it doesn't do anything from three-quarter throttle on. It's all the air it needed. Yeah. So this actually, you know, in a drag race application only, this is fine. But in, if you were to try and drive this on the street, there's a lot of surface area that opens and is available all at once, and it's going to make it really pretty touchy to drive. Okay, so as we talked about, you know, essentially the 4500 and the 4150s were pretty close, up yeah. to 6100, 6200 RPMs, where we saw just that slight increase yeah. in power. Yeah. So really close to it, you know, proving the fact that we don't need that much airflow was the 4150. So the 4150s ended up with 747.7 .7 horsepower and 621.1 pound-feet of torque. So again, only about seven, eight more horsepower, yeah. but a lot more manageable tool throttle bodies that are 1,000 CFM each, so essentially half of the CFM of what these 4500s are. Yeah, it's, it's interesting when we start looking at just not to talk about carburetors much, but when you talk about acceleration rates of the engine and how you need airspeed to make a carburetor work, the fuel injection isn't going to be as sensitive to that. The throttle size is not going to really change the way the engine accelerates a whole lot, but I think it's just going to get to be very touchy drivability-wise. So would you feel the same on the 4150s? Do you feel like the dual 1000 CFM would be a little bit more manageable as far as trying to yeah, drive it? That'd be my choice if it were a street car. I still might do this if it were a drag racer just because it looks cool. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. Okay, so that was our 4150 numbers. So now we went to the Holly High Ram, just a standard top with right. the 105 throttle body, straight bore 105 cable driven throttle body. And there we ended up with 732.6 horsepower and 606.5 pound-feet of torque, and the 4150 just made more power everywhere yeah. over the 105. I, I actually have to tell you, that surprised me a bit. So I think there's something to do with the shape uh, of that top as well. There's less volume on that top, is kind of just visually what I'm seeing, and we'd have to measure it, but I think there's less overall plenum volume. So I don't know that it was completely the restriction of the 105. That, still flows a whole bunch of air. So I think it could have been as far as peak numbers. Uh, plenum size, not a huge, huge deal, but it can change the characteristics of top end a little bit. So the 105 flows about 
5,500 CFM, so yeah. about 500 less than the dual 4150 yeah. setup. Now, do you also feel like maybe the air coming in straight right down the runners is better than it turning the air coming in through the top of the manifold? My, my feeling is ours is almost no doubt. You know, the better the alignment, the better it is over the port. Uh, the more opportunity, I'll put it, I'll phrase it that way, the more opportunity there is for the better cylinder filling. Great. And our last manifold was the MSD Atomic. Now, this is kind of comparing apples and oranges a little bit here because the high ram, you know, it started off a little bit of advantage that we had a ported lower versus the Atomic is essentially completely box stock. And you've got a short runner versus long runner configuration. So this really kind of comes down to where do you want the power, right? Mm -hmm. So the Atomic peak, we ended up with 718.7 horsepower and 621.5 pound feet. But if you look at the average numbers, the average number is MSD makes better average power. So it's 579.9 pound-feet of torque and 605 horsepower, where the 105 was 570 pound-feet of torque, 598 horsepower. Still very close, but where do you want the power? Well, so you bring up a really good point that I wanted to touch on. You'll hear this on the internet. I see it all the time. Guys will actually say, the intake manifold doesn't matter when we talk dual plane versus single plane in the old carbureted days. They will talk about if it's fuel injected, it doesn't matter. What you brought up about effectively testing runner length, it still matters whether it's fuel injected, carbureted, whatever. We're talking about the length of the runner. The beauty of the fuel injection is, is that you can package really long runners in a very low profile package because you're only flowing air. You're not having to drag fuel around in circles or anything like that. So the opportunity to get a longer runner for a street application that Atomic is awesome. I mean, it's just got tons of runner length, drivability, way more torque down low, um, but you give up some of the top end for the guy who's uh, wanting to build something like this to go drag racing. Yeah, exactly, for drag racing. So if this was, say, a rowdy street motor and someone wanted the more torque, then yes. that Atomic's great. Yeah. If you wanted something that's gonna make more peak, the high ram is great. So it's really kind of like understanding the characteristics of runner length and how that affects that torque delivery versus horsepower delivery. Because the reality was the Atomic was better to 6,300 RPM, yeah. but from 6,300 up, you know, the, the, the dual quad setup and in, in all the dual quad and the 105 essentially just took over, right? So if you want to go all the way aggressive, the 4,500 is making almost 40 more horsepower, 36 yeah. more horsepower at than the Atomic at yeah. peak. So where do you want the power? I think we can better tell people that through our tests, depending on your size of your motor and how you want to use it, this kind of give you a little bit of a basis of comparison. You see guys talking camshafts all the time about whether they want torque down low or RPM up high. But look, it all matters whether it's camshaft, cylinder head, throttle body sizes, uh, intake manifold runner links, you know, and that's what we tested here. And it all makes a difference and it just goes to show kind of what you can do to profile the engine to your characteristics, your wants, your needs. So there you go, some insight from Steve over at West Tech. So the next time you build an LS engine, you might have a better understanding of what intake manifold to get for your motor.